Good evening, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. I hope you've had a great day. I hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, tonight, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of your time. I'm sorry we're late. I, I lost track of time. Uh, but tonight, we're going to be talking about an encounter with God. And if you haven't had an encounter with God, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't know what you're missing. You agree with that, Carson? Amen. Whitney, you agree with that? So tonight I want to talk about an encounter with God. Our scripture tonight is Psalms 34, 8. And it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I was mowing grass downtown and I kept getting this thought taste and see that the Lord is good. I could not shake the thought. I mean, it just would not go out of my head. So we're, that's what we're going to talk about. And it may sound like a strange or, or an odd name for a sermon, but, you know, I've said in the past, if you're looking for extravagant names and all that good stuff, you need to look elsewhere. But there's a lot of people all around us looking for something greater. They're looking for something greater. They're looking for something more. And many people don't even know where to turn to next. They think they have an idea of what they're wanting to do, or they think they know, but they don't have a clue. There, some people are looking for happiness in all the wrong places. Some people feel alone, and they think you know they'll never that they'll never have anyone that there's no no one to you know cling to, lean on. You understand what I'm saying? People of all colors, backgrounds, creeds, and whatever the case may be. They're looking for something to fill a void that they feel from within. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, and there's people out there that have made poor choices in their lives. Let me ask you a question. Carson, have you ever made a poor choice in your life? He says, yes. Whitney, have you ever made a poor choice? Of course, she says. Of course, we've all made poor choices at some point in our life. And we've, we've made bad decisions. We've gotten on the wrong path here and there. Things happen. Some have turned to the path of drugs and other things. And you may be wondering, where am I going with this? Why do I keep going on and on and on about people, their choices and whatnot, and the reason for it? But we are given choices in life. And some choices can truly hurt us in the end. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen, Carson? I'm saying amen to Carson. He's like literally like right here in front of me, right beside me just about. And Whitney's behind me. But some choices can truly hurt us in the end. While others, they, you know, they may not seem like it's going to benefit us initially, but it will pay off in the end. And as I mentioned, we're talking about an encounter with God. And I'm not talking about aliens, Carson. Tonight, I want to talk about an encounter with with God. Have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good? See, that's there's so many people out there. They have not yet tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Amen. But we're going to be revisiting a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Yes, Carson, Zacchaeus. When we first talked about old Zacchaeus in the sermon we preached back in October of last year called a different view. And no pun intended, we are getting a different view of that story. So long story short, Jesus was coming. Zacchaeus was a short man, and he wanted to be able to see Jesus. Since he was short, Carson, you know, you remember the story? Yeah. He was having trouble looking over the crowd. So he climbs a sycamore tree to get a different view. He had to get above the crowd because he couldn't see past them. Well, as you know in the story, Jesus comes to him and, and tells him to come down for he has to be... Uh, a guest at you know uh, Zacchaeus' house. Well, it says Zac the scripture says Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, and that he was rich, right, Carson? Well, he was rich because he was taking some of the money that he was collecting, right? Uh, yes, Carson. Money from yes, he was taking money from the pulling money from the pot that he was collecting from people. So obviously that made him a thief because he stole. And that made him bad. It also didn't, it didn't help that tax collectors were looked at as traitors 
you know, for working for the Roman Empire and not the Jewish communities in there. So those around poor Zacchaeus thought he was just a corrupt, a corrupt man and a traitor. If you read in the book of, chap of Luke chapter 19, verse 7, it says, And, and when they saw it, and then this is after Jesus tells Zacchaeus to come down from the tree. I must stay at your house tonight. But w And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he ha was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And can you imagine what that must have looked like to all the people that witnessed it? All the crowds that witnessed Jesus come to town just to go into the house with a sinner. And it's almost like they're saying, welcome Jesus and... Uh, He's gone to be a guest with that sinner. You know, that sinner. You see, this man was a thief. He was a sinner. And Jesus come to be a guest at his house. Somebody say his house tonight. His house. Carson, you got to say it like you mean it. His house. His house. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? Zacchaeus. Do you hear this? Zacchaeus, a thief, a sinner. And Jesus come to be a guest at his house. Right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. There was an encounter with God that day for Zacchaeus. Luke 19, 8 through 10. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. In verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Have you tasted of the Lord and seen that He is good? Now this, is, this account in Luke, unfortunately that's the only time we ever hear about Zacchaeus. So we don't really know what happens to him in the end. But I honestly would like to think that Zacchaeus was a changed man. Salvation, he found salvation that day. You know, the Lord tells him in verse 9, that This day salvation come to this house. Because this man too is a son of Abraham. Jesus come to find and save those that are lost. To me this is a good indicator of the encounter Zacchaeus had with God. Somebody say encounter with God. Encounter with God. Carson, you're acting all shy tonight. So what does all this mean? What is, how does this apply to us? Carson, you want to answer that? How does this apply to us? Shouldn't be a thief, he says. You shouldn't sin, you shouldn't steal from people. But tonight I'm going to tell you, some of us need an encounter with God. All right? People, it takes more than just showing up for church, playing the part, clocking in and clocking out. You know, it's like what we do at work. You walk in, well, depending on if you have a time clock, uh, clock or not, we, all, we have a... It's on the computer, but you come into work, you do the same, and you clock in and you clock out, and it's time to go home. And that's some of that's what some of us are doing with church. We come in, we clock in to the service, and then we leave. We clock out and leave. Some of us are like Zacchaeus. We're needing something different, needing something new, and we're needing Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. No, y'all don't sound like y'all say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus tonight. Jesus. I encourage you. When you go to the when you go to church, participate and get involved with the service. Worship and praise God with all your heart. Your soul and your mind give the Lord your highest praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. But too many times we go to church and we do the same thing. We'll, we, you know, go up there. You shake the preacher's hand at the end of the service, and throughout service, you're standing there behind the pew. You're kind of timid. You don't want to put your hands up in the air. We've all been there before, right, Whitney? We've all been there. But give the Lord your highest. Have you tasted of the Lord and seen that He is good? Yes. Have you? Carson says he's tasted of the Lord, seen that He's good. And it says, "Blessed is the man that puts his trust in Him." Carson says he felt the Spirit when he prayed. Amen. An encounter with God. You know, earlier in the sermon, I mentioned we have choices to make. And this is yeah. where I get ready to close. Like the biggest choice is oh. to go to heaven or hell. Carson says the biggest choice you have to make in life is whether you go to heaven or hell. 
I think Carson, you should be over here preaching this. Well, we all have that choice to make. Carson, you're absolutely right. That's exactly where I was going with this. And I refuse. I straight up refuse to sugarcoat this. I'm not going to uh, beat around the bush. I'm going to tell <laughs> I'm going to tell it like it is. All right? If you exit this life without Jesus, you find yourself in hell. There's no point in, in beating around the bush. We have to know Jesus Christ. We have to be filled with His Spirit. We have to turn from our sins and become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen? We can't continue to live the same way we once lived. Like rich and mean to people. Rich and mean like, to people. To people what that Carson are says. Right. Should when I, I <laughs> Alright Carson. When I preached that message under new management the first time I preached that message and I did a, a, re, a revised one last year but I didn't feel like that message went over so well. I didn't feel like it went over too smooth. Because in that message I was saying if you're going to be under new management, let's be under new management. If you say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, let's be a follower of Jesus Christ. Let our actions portray that. Let our post on Facebook portray that. We act so different in the church house than we do outside the church. Right? Carson shook his head, yeah. We have to... When we, when we accept Jesus Christ, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we become a new creature in Jesus Christ. The old man is passed away, and we rise up a new one. Amen? Do you agree with that tonight, Whitney? Romans 6, 23. Yes, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Let me read that again. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need an encounter with Jesus Christ. And you may be saying, well, no, I've been in this Christianity thing for a long time. I've been serving the Lord for a long time. I don't care how long you've been in it. You may have been going to church since you was knee high to a grasshopper. And you may be 70 years old right now. We still need to have our encounters with God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not just... you. Okay, look, it's not just you come up to the altar and you give your life to the Lord. You pray, you cry, you weep, and boo-hoo-hoo. And then we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And then that's it. It doesn't just stop. But the problem is some people stop way before they should. They go up to the altar and they start feeling the emotions. See, the problem is they have an experience, but not an encounter. Does that make sense? They get a little taste of it. But they don't get the full encounter. But as soon as they go out, they just drop it. Like, when it comes to Jesus Christ, I don't want just an appetizer. Okay? <laughs> I don't want just an appetizer. I need an all-you-can-eat buffet. Because I need to taste of the Lord and see that He is good. Amen? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I need to know. I have to follow Jesus. Alright? Yeah. We really need an encounter. Oh. You know... A long time ago, I thought that I used to think, well, once you go up to the altar, you get the Holy Ghost, and the altar is just for sinners. I used to think that. But no, the altar is for all of us. Sinners, saints, whatever you want to call it. I don't see saints, but it's sinners saved by grace, right? It's for everybody. We need an encounter with God every day. Does that make sense? Praising, praying Him. Reading the word. Like every day in the tapping morning. into that. Amen? Like every day in the morning. I mean, think about Saul. He had an encounter with God. And, you know, he was persecuting Christians. He was wanting to kill Christians. But he had an encounter with God and later had a new life spread in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? A sinner... And Jesus come to them. I want you to know that tonight. If you feel like you're a sinner, which we're all sinners, but if you feel like things will never change, think about old Zacchaeus. He was stealing money from the pot. Taking money, to the tax, taking up the tax collections and then taking some out for himself. He was a thief. 
He was a sinner. But Jesus come to him. Right? In the tree. He's in the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus comes to him. There's a life change there. There is room at the table of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you tonight, do not allow your sins, your past, your and I have to say this all the time, but don't let your sins and your past, your old life determine what you are today. Learn from your mistakes. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make bad choices. Bad decisions. You may get derailed. You know, we talked about trained up. You might get derailed from time to time. But you have to let that stuff go. Give it to God and let it go. And move on in Jesus Christ. But we need an encounter with God. And I'm going to say it again. I don't care if you've been a Christian all your life. It's not just a one-time thing. Oh, I remember what I was going to say earlier. People go up to the altar. And then I, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. We, people go up to the altar and they cry. And, and you know, we said they had that, that experience. And they say, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And they think that's all there is to it after that. But there's more to it. We must be filled with His Spirit. I just think like... We have to have His Spirit. Like which is the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost. Church. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost. That's what it is. We have to have that encounter with God. Amen. Well, I wish I had the... I can't see it. It's a little bit different when you do audio. Uh, but I appreciate everybody that tuned in. We're going to we're get ready to dismiss in some prayer. And we're going to just pray, because I'm having a hard time seeing this down here. We're going to just pray for everybody that's, that's listening, that everybody that's going to listen, for anybody that has special unspoken prayer requests, because you know the Lord sees the need. He knows the situation. So we're going to do that. We're dismissing prayer. But I do appreciate you tuning in. I love you guys. God bless you. And Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I ask that anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, that whatever need, whatever the situation may be, maybe it's maybe they're the Zacchaeus tonight, Lord. Lord, I ask that you will touch them, Lord, move in their lives, strengthen them, and touch anybody that's around them in their lives, God. Lord, anybody that's under the sound of my voice, if they need healing, Lord, we ask that you touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And Lord, we ask that you will grow True Life Way in the way that you see fit, Lord. And move in us, God, and, and use us. And we love you, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. 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 Carson got amen. He was the first one to say amen. Yeah. But anyways, I appreciate you. I love you guys. God bless you. And if you ever need, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, Whitney and I is here for you. Uh, you can call us, text us, whatever. There's multiple ways to get a hold of us. So, But anyways, God bless you, and thank you for tuning in.